My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio, and today we're going to do a walkthrough of Carnival Horizon. Before we get to the horizon, if you like this video and you'd like to see more content, subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. All right, so on to Carnival Horizon. Horizon was launched in spring of 2018, April 2nd to be exact. She was Carnival Cruise Line's second Vista-class ship. Of course, Vista was the first one, Horizon number two, and Panorama number three coming out December 2019. She comes in at 133,500 gross registered tons. She carries close to 5,000 people full capacity and 1,055 feet long. Now, Carnival Horizon is based year-round out of Miami, and she does six in eight night Caribbean cruises. You embark Carnival Horizon on deck number three. We're going to start the tour on deck number two since deck number one is all staterooms. Now, deck number two is all staterooms as well, but this is the family harbor area towards the aft end. So this is the spot that's dedicated for families and it has their own lounge. Uh, what makes these staterooms so special is they have two bathrooms and that divider curtain to give mom and dad the privacy and kind of just rope them kids off with that uh, by shutting that curtain. They also have that family harbor lounge in here that families who are staying in the cabins can go to. It's key card access. It serves food, ice cream, has video games, just a really chill spot. The cabins that are included in the Family Harbor area are interior cabins, ocean view, cove balconies, aft balconies, and of course, family suites. All right, so up to deck number three. This is where the guest relation desk is, the shore excursions desk, and also the liquid lounge is right up in the front. You can access the Liquid Lounge from decks four and five. Deck four is going to be the ground entry, deck five, the cheap seats. If you're one of those people who like to sneak out, I would suggest sitting on deck number five. Easy in, easy out, like you were never even there. You'll also find that multicolor, three-story LED dreamscape right in the middle of deck number three as well. Also, the main dining room located on deck three midship and deck three and four aft. The midship dining room is called the Reflection Restaurant, and the aft one is the Meridian Restaurant. The midship one is one floor, and the aft restaurant is two floors, so deck three and deck four. Going up to deck number four, the Horizon Casino can be a bit smoky sometimes, depending on what time of day you pass through there. So if you have smoke allergies, you might want to consider bypassing it on one of those upper or lower decks. Um, unlike other classes of Carnival Cruise Line ships, the casino is located on deck four and the promenade is deck five. So other, um, unlike the previous classes of Carnival ships, like the Dream Class or even the Conquest Class, where you walk through the casino and then on you know, down the promenade where you have the bars and the alchemy bar and all that. Everything's kind of separate on here, kind of isolating the casino and the sports bar on deck four and then everything else, one deck above it on deck number five. You'll also find that uh, casino bar right in the middle of the casino that has that mini two-story dreamscape. Skybox Sports Bar is just after the casino with a wall of TVs and a sports ticker to show you up-to-the-date sports scores. Also an electronic Texas Hold'em table in here as well. The Punchliner Comedy Club is on deck four behind the sports bar. This is the place to go when you want to see that adult comedy show. You'll want to make sure that you get there early, though. There are some pole obstructions in the way, and the late night show gets really crowded like every other carnival ship. So I would consider getting in here between 20 and 30 minutes before showtime. This is also where you'll find the nightclub at nighttime. So carnival has been... Um, having some noise issues holding the nightclub in the liquid lounge at the front of the ship. So they kind of moved everything back here to the Punchline or Comedy Club, or um, what do they call this? The Limelight Lounge, I believe. This is also where you'll find the second floor of the aft dining room. On my sailing, they use the aft dining room on this for any time dining. However, it does vary from sailing to sailing. I read some reviews that the midship dining room was also used for any time during a recent sailing. So again, the midship dining room is only one floor and the aft dining room is two floors. As far as the elevators on this ship, there are three banks of them. Eight of them are forward, four midship, and four aft. The elevators can be a little bit tricky if you don't know what's going on because it's not your typical elevator. You don't just open the door, go inside, and push the button where you want to go. How it works is there's the um, a touch screen on the outside of the elevator, and you'll touch what floor you want to go to. From there, it will assign you an elevator number or letter, and you'll go to that dedicated elevator that will take you to the floor. So... When you're standing there waiting for the elevator, don't just jump into the first elevator that do, the, where the door opens, because if it does, you'll go to some floor you probably don't want to go to, unless it's lunchtime and everyone goes to Lido deck, right? 
All right, so let's go up to deck number five. All the way forward on deck number five is the third and final level of the Liquid Lounge, the cheap seats, as I call them. Sit up here if you want to sneak out of the show early and not cause a scene. I can usually be found back here because of the easy in, easy out approach. I can't really sit still through these shows. They play on these ships. Uh, more fun shops are located on deck number five, along with Cherry on Top, the candy store and ice cream shop. There's an ice cream parlor on the ship as well, located inside Cherry on Top. $3 each. Pick your topping. Roll it on a cold stone. There you go. Uh, you can also enjoy that outside as well. There's an outside lanai outside of the ice cream dock, uh, ice cream shop on deck number five. This shouldn't be confused with the Swirls ice cream machine located on deck number 10 inside the Lido Marketplace. That is complimentary. The Piano Bar and Library Bar are also both on deck number five, just off of the main atrium. The Piano Bar a little different on Carnival Horizon, and they created a concept that I'm not sure is working too well, I guess depending on who you ask, right? Um, at least when I was on there, it was kind of a hot mess. They have this wall that's rollable, and it kind of collapses between the Piano Bar and the Steakhouse. So up until 10 o'clock, you can hear music playing in the Piano Bar in the Steakhouse, it's supposed to replicate a fine dining experience with classical type music, but it was nothing like that whenever I sailed on it. The Alchemy Bar is the center point of Deck 5. This is where you can get a handcrafted cocktail, and it's a fairly open space around here in Alchemy. To the right of Alchemy is the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse, $38 per person to dine in there. And then to the left is both Bonsai Sushi and Bonsai Teppanyaki. Keep in mind, if you're looking to book a night in the Teppanyaki Steakhouse, uh, you know, they're throwing the food in front of you and all that fun stuff. It needs to be done in advance because it's only limited to 16 people per seating. And with a ship that carries nearly 5,000 people, the early bird's going to get the worm on this one. Bonsai Sushi is an a la carte restaurant, and the Bonsai Teppanyaki, about $35 to $40 per person, depending on if you want vegetables, steak, chicken, seafood. It all varies um, depending on what you order. I should also note that both Bonsai Sushi and the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse can both be enjoyed inside or outside on the lanai. Just behind the Alchemy Bar is Pixel's Photo Gallery. Pixel's uses facial recognition for you to pull up your photos. They can also be seen on these big digital boards as you walk by the gallery or on your smartphone device. I think even on your TV. I can't remember if I pulled it up on the television or not, but I think I did. Basically, what I'm trying to say is you have options when it comes to looking at your pictures. Behind Pixels, you'll have Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse Brew House. This is the first ship that has the Guy Fieri partnership that with the actual brew house. So there's a brewmaster that's living on board, and he's brewing up three or four different types of brews throughout the year, kegging them on the ship and bringing them to the different bars. Uh, you can also take brewery tours in here if you'd like to. So the Pig and Anchor Smokehouse part, so the food part, Lunch is complimentary. It's served outside on deck number five. You can eat it inside if you'd like. Um, no table service, though, except for drinks for lunch. Now, for dinner, it's a sit-down restaurant. Again, you can sit inside or outside. The outside barbecue area, the buffet part, is closed for dinner, and it's only um, a la carte pretty much. So, like, appetizers start at $3, sandwiches start at 7 and you can get a prime rib for, like, 15 bucks or something in there. It's actually really solid barbecue. They had to get a permit for a smoker on the ship and all that. So really good solid barbecue at the guys pick and anchor smokehouse brew house. Outside of the brew house and down the hall is Ocean Plaza. This is a public space where they play trivia, dance at night, and have live bands. Also, crafts are done in here. Um, this is a spot that they set up for breakfast and lunch as well. Carnival used to have what they called the Taste Bar, where they gave you kind of different options to sample the specialty restaurants in their fleet. Looks like they scratched that whole Taste Bar concept, but the buffet area is now used for uh, breakfast or lunch here. I also want to mention that on deck number five, you can walk pretty much the whole way around the ship except the aft section. So say you're on the aft end, you have the Havana Suites, the Havana Lanai's there. That's controlled access. There's an entry point to go in and out of that with a key card. However, forward of that is all an open deck. On one side of the ship is the Bonsai Sushi outside area and it's just a place to chill. Other side is the Cherry on Top, the Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse area. And forward of that, you have access to those observation decks where you can you know, go in front of the ship on deck five, six, and seven. Deck number eight on Carnival Horizon is the bridge. So don't be foolish down there on decks five, six, and seven. The captain can see you. Deck five aft is where the Havana Suites and the Havana Bar are both located, along with the Havana Retreat. The Havana Bar plays Latin music. They have this really kicking live Latin band. Really just chill place during the daytime. If you want to escape the heat at nighttime, it really comes to life back here. Um, the Havana Retreat is located just outside with two giant whirlpools and a swimming pool. Now, this space is dedicated 
for only Havana guests that are staying in suites during the daytime. And then it opens up to the public around 7 o'clock, and the outside area here is open until the basically last call, until the bar closes. If you're wondering the price difference between staying in a regular balcony cabin or staying in a Havana Lanai kind of balcony cabin, about $300 more per person. It'll set you back if you want to stay here in the Havana Suite. Again, you have to look at the amenities and the perks offered. You know, if the peace and quiet, you know, it is capped back here. There's only a certain amount of number of staterooms that are Havana staterooms. I believe it's close to 60 total on this ship. So if you want that peace and quiet, um, consider this, you know, Havana area. If not, enjoy it after 7 o'clock where it won't cost you anything more. Deck 6, 7, 8, and 9 are mostly staterooms with the exception of a couple of things. The IMAX slash Thrill Theater located Deck 6, 7 midship. And then, of course, the ceiling is raised for the IMAX Theater, so that takes up part of Deck number 8. The IMAX Theater and Thrill Theater do both cost extra money. And you'll also find the Kids Club and the Arcade located on Deck 6. Heading up to deck number 10 by the pool, you have those two staple poolside eateries, Guy's Burger Joint and the Blue Iguana Cantina. Also, the two watering holes there, the Red Frog Rum Bar and the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar out here. By the pool, there's plenty of areas to lounge around. There's that dive-in movie screen and also a big beach pool with two little like cabanas with some splash areas. And then the water park is up a couple of decks higher. You have those Dr. Seuss characters around the water park. One of the slides is a raft slide or a tube slide, and the other one is just a regular slide, a kind of a speed racer type slide. You'll definitely get an adrenaline rush on both rides. If it's cool, though, or windy, it can get chilly, so be warned. Deck number 10, midship, is where you'll find your typical Carnival Cruise Line buffet area. It has a decent flow to it, a lot of options up here. Meat carving station, salad bar, desserts. There's a deli in here as well. The uh, This area mimics or mirrors each other, so the front and aft part of the Lido deck pretty much have the same areas, with the exception of the aft part of Lido deck marketplace it does have the Carnival Deli. That's where you can get your Rubens and your turkey wraps and your um, hot buffalo chicken sandwiches. All of that is located on deck 10 aft on Lido. You won't find that forward. Just outside of the Lido Deck Marketplace, you'll find a seafood shack that has that made-to-order fresh seafood. Those items like lobster rolls and fried ch- uh, like clam chowder, fried shrimp. Also some crab legs served in here. And it is an a la carte venue, so there's an extra charge to eat at the seafood shack. Opposite of the seafood shack is where you'll find Pizzeria del Capitano. That's where you'll have that 24-hour complimentary pizza, so no charge here, unless you get deliveries. If you get room service or if you ordered on the app and have it delivered to you anywhere on the ship, uh, you will get charged an extra fee, $5, plus you can leave an extra gratuity there if you want. Also located back here are two hot tubs, a pool, and a bar. Going up one deck, you have some seating that overhangs deck number 10, and also a designated smoking area up on deck number 11 as well. Walk through the sliding glass doors and inside to deck number 11, you'll have two specialty restaurants up here. Cucina del Capitano, that's the Italian restaurant that has a free captain's pasta bar for lunchtime, $15 at night. Also, Gigi's Asian Kitchen, that's an Asian fusion venue. Both of these restaurants are $15, actually, and kids 11 and under are $5. Gigi does offer a Mongolian walk, free lunch. Um, I think served like two o'clock or so. Um, I think that's every day. Camp Ocean and Dr. Seuss's Bookville also located on deck number 11 midship. The kids program divided into three different age groups. You have the toddlers, the tweens, and then the teens. Up to decks number 12 and 14 forward, you'll find the Cloud Nine Spa and the Fitness Center. Carnival Horizon or any Carnival ship does not have a deck number 13. Here you can buy that Thermal Suite Pass and the heated loungers and the mineral pool. That'll have you access there. Unless you're staying in a spa suite, then you don't have to buy the pass because it's included with a spa package that you get for staying there. Thermal suites aren't as great as the Dream Class. In fact, the mineral pool is... And on this ship, kind of, it almost seemed like an afterthought because it's just an oversized whirlpool. You know, the Carnival Dream class has this massive pool all by itself. Um, But whatever, you still have access to it if you want to get that. Deck 12 midship is the sports square area, the clubhouse, the golf course, giant oversized games. And one level up from this area is where you'll access the Sky Ride and the ropes course on Horizon. The Sky Ride is fun, but the lines can get a little bit long. If you want to do it, a Porte might be your 
your best option or go right when you embark the ship. I mean, there is this allure of doing it in the middle of the ocean, right? But if you want to do that and like live out that dream, you're probably going to have to wait. One sea day, there was an hour and a half wait when I was on this sailing it in the Caribbean. Another time when I was sailing the transatlantic over from Europe because of the demographic, obviously zero, almost zero kids on it. There was uh, no line. So I got to go around three times until someone finally walked up. So I got to ride until my heart was content. You'll also need shoes for both the ropes course and the sky ride. No flip-flops are allowed up here. The jogging track and basketball court also located on deck number 12. Deck number 15 forward is where you'll find the serenity area. The serenity area on horizon has two giant hot tubs, a full service bar, also a creations area. This creations is a, is a salad bar they offer on sea days. This is a good spot if you want to grab something to eat but don't want to give up your seat. I mean, unless you want to throw a towel on it and be a towel hog. Not condoning that, but you'll probably do it anyway. Um, sometimes they also hold nightly dance parties up here as well. So really chill area in Serenity. One of the good things with the Serenity on this ship, in this class of ship really, is that the water slide entrance is high above Serenity. So you don't have that traffic going through Serenity to get onto the water slide and hearing the kids give that final screen. They actually have to climb up a couple of decks. And that'll do it for the tour of Carnival Horizon. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. You're the reason why I make these videos. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of Cruise Radio and the Daily Cruise Radio News Podcast. You can find both of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just type in Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. So what do you think about Carnival Horizon? Do you have any tips for sailing on her or have you sailed her? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.